This video was brought to you by BetterHelp. How's it feel to be back? It feels so good to be back. Lately, it's easy to feel pressure to turn every free moment into an opportunity to get smarter, stronger, or most importantly, wealthier. We're all managing side hustles, adopting productive grind sets, and monetizing our hobbies to avoid wasting an afternoon. You might even be watching this video because you feel like it's more productive to learn something in your free time than watch more of this. Which, hey, it's great for us, but it's also an opportunity for introspection. What is it about laziness that feels morally wrong? Why does doing nothing make us so uncomfortable? And maybe most importantly, is laziness actually a thing? Let's find out in this Wisecrack edition why laziness is the greatest American sin. But before we go on, we want to thank this video's sponsor, BetterHelp. If you've experienced anxiety or depression or just generally felt overwhelmed lately, BetterHelp is a resource that can help you feel better. I personally have struggled with anxiety for literally my entire life, and feeling like I am trapped in a vortex of endless work has not made things easier. BetterHelp's network of more than 30,000 therapists are ready to listen to and help you. After taking a brief questionnaire, you'll be matched with a therapist whose expertise fits your unique needs. And thanks to BetterHelp's remote model, you can work with a therapist whose skills might not otherwise be available in your area. You can message your therapist at any time and you'll receive timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule your choice of phone or video sessions to receive counseling in real time. I cannot overstate how much seeing a therapist has helped me get control of my anxiety and made it possible to even be in front of you here today. And in the event that you and your therapist aren't a perfect match, you can easily switch to a new one for no additional charge. So join the more than 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp by visiting betterhelp.com wisecrack, or just click the link in the video description. When you do, you'll get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash wisecrack. And now, back to the show. Laziness as a moral concern has been around, at least from a Judeo-Christian perspective, since Adam and Eve got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Later, the church codified this when it included sloth as one of the seven deadly sins. Building on these biblical roots, the notion of human labor as an indispensable source of value, aka work ethic, was born. Puritans brought the concept of laziness to North America, and today, laziness is defined as the quality of being unwilling to work or expend energy. Unlike being tired, unmotivated, or depressed, laziness is treated like it's an essential trait. Someone isn't being lazy, they are lazy. And the youngest generation to enter the workforce are guaranteed to be the lazy ones. Gen Z has been stereotyped as lazy and unaware. Millennials were called lazy and unwilling to work. And Gen X was recently labeled the original quiet quitters. People in lower economic groups are often cast as lazy bones draining the welfare system. Thanks, Ronald. How about women and immigrants? You guessed it, also lazy. Okay, so who isn't lazy? Well, historically, it's been well-dressed, or these days hoodie-clad business bros, who use their intelligence and hard work to make bank. And they all tend to look like this. And more recently, this. So when and how did laziness become the scarlet letter of modern day society? Well, evolutionarily, it's normal for humans to conserve energy. However, humans don't like being idle either. I mean, have you ever tried being bored? Kinda sucks. But if you feel like wanting to conserve energy and be productive seems a little paradoxical, you're absolutely right. It's what scholars refer to as the paradox of effort. Sometimes we want to do as little as possible, and other times the act of doing something is intrinsically valuable, so we put in more effort, like figuring out how to get to sweet greens without asking for directions. So humans can be both lazy and productive. But what matters more than what science says is what we actually believe. Is laziness an inherent part of being human? Well, British philosopher Bertrand Russell was, surprisingly, pro-laziness. He believed that leisure is essential to civilization, and that we shouldn't have to work more than four hours a day. Others weren't so convinced. Solon, the founder of ancient Athenian democracy, came in hot with, laziness is the mother of all evil. And philosopher Immanuel Kant had some pretty choice words for laziness, writing, laziness and cowardice are the reasons why so great a proportion of men, even when nature has long emancipated them from alien guidance, nevertheless gladly remain immature for life. While associating laziness with cowardice sounds harsh, it's worth noting that Kant is writing specifically about laziness towards critical thought, one which he thought needed to be overcome for people to intellectually liberate themselves. Westerners seem to fall into the anti-laziness pack. We treat a reluctance to work like it's a sin, whereas busyness, usefulness, and productivity are morally good, especially when they're tied to a paycheck. 
As sociologist David Graeber put it, we have become a civilization based on work, not even productive work, but work as an end and meaning in itself. We have come to believe that men and women who do not work harder than they wish at jobs they do not particularly enjoy are bad people, unworthy of love, care, or assistance from their communities. It is as if we have collectively acquiesced to our own enslavement. The f is this world? What have they done to us? What did they do to us? For his part, Aristotle was also worried about laziness. As for him, reaching a state of true happiness involves that we're being active and intentional, i.e. the opposite of binge-watching Vanderpump Rules. Yes, I was being an ass, but if there's one thing an ass doesn't want to see is his girlfriend walking alone with some guy with a dumb face and a stupid beard. In his Politics, he writes that, for happiness is action, and many noble things reach their end in the actions of those who are just and temperate. But if you don't do anything, you're going to struggle to get anywhere close to happiness and virtue. Like I said earlier, aversion to free time was militantly adopted by Christians and carried on by the Puritans, who believed that people who worked hard would go to heaven and those who struggled to do so were destined for hell. This belief system caught on and became very productive in service of colonization. I mean, if putting people to work against their will makes them virtuous, and if their resistance to being enslaved makes them lazy and bad, it becomes pretty easy to justify colonialism and slavery. Scholar Dr. Devin Price explained that this worldview, that people who opposed unjust labor were broken or disturbed, became the foundation for American capitalism and the laziness lie. According to Price, the laziness lie says hard work is morally superior to relaxation and that people who aren't productive have less innate value than productive people. This belief system was used as justification to subjugate marginalized groups like Native Americans and poor white folks and absolutely exploded in the Industrial Revolution. And workers being busy made the ruling class less worried about pesky uprisings and gave the rich more time for finger foods and horses. Or as Graeber, evoking George Orwell, put it, a population busy working doesn't have time to do much else. The ideology of the American dream reinforced anti-laziness attitudes and encouraged societal complacency. If you work hard enough and don't challenge the system, you can rise to the upper class. The poor were encouraged to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps, and it was largely believed it was their fault they were poor in the first place. Classic American myths of the self-made man, perpetuated in late 19th century books by writers like Horatio Alger, further perpetuated this idea. The narrative bled into many of Hollywood's early westerns, in which strong men who don't play by the rules lone wolf their way to success. With these narratives becoming so fundamental to American cultural identity, it's no surprise that things like economic reform, legal protections for workers, and welfare programs are framed as rewarding couch potatoes who don't contribute to society. Research shows that many Americans believe that people get what they deserve. The delusion that life is fair hurts our capacity to be compassionate to others or even ourselves, driving us to work to exhaustion and to judge others for not doing the same. This shame cycle serves people in power, who are never, ever called lazy. Life is unfair. And that's why today, many believe that even our free time should have some clear productive end, ideally a financial one. And even when we sleep, we should have some type of passive income system in place so our bank account grows as we dream of Tim Ferriss telling us that we're daddy's special child. Who will daddy kiss, daddy kiss, daddy kiss? And when we do have free time, it can be stressful because we might feel like leisure is wasteful and unproductive. It's like, how am I commute to and from the studio today? I'm gonna be listening to podcasts or audiobooks at 1.75 speed to try and cram some more potentially valuable information into my brain. I mean, I don't even find new music anymore because I'm so busy trying to be productive and cram all this information in my head that I don't have time to do what I enjoy. Even vacation isn't safe from the productivity craze. Only 14% of Americans take two weeks vacation in a row, and 54% of American workers didn't use up their vacation time, leaving 662 million unused vacation days. I mean, compare that to our friends in Brazil, who enjoy an average of 30 days off per year. And even when we do take time off, it's hard to let go of our need to feel productive. I mean, I'm ashamed to admit it, but the last time that I hung out with my family, I was taking work calls the whole time, and I wasn't getting paid. Our fear of laziness has made us allergic to fun and rest. But is laziness really that bad? Not according to some intellectual heavyweights. John Steinbeck, noted fan of Mice, Men, and Grapes, said, Only in laziness can one achieve a state of contemplation which is a balancing of values, a weighing of oneself against the world, and the world against itself. And your anti-fascist favorite, Theodore Adorno, believed laziness was the ultimate symbol of unruly thought. 
the only place where freedom is possible, or as Marx also believed, where freedom begins. And it's worth returning to Aristotle here, because while he did critique laziness and inactivity, he was also critical of the idea that human beings should be working all the time. In politics, he writes that the citizens must not live a mechanic or a mercantile life, for such a life is ignoble and inimical to virtue. For leisure is needed both for the development of virtue and for active participation in politics. He's arguing that if we are to be good humans, we can't spend all day working, as we need time to develop morals, be creative, and think about our communities. While this might not be him saying it's good to stare at your phone for six hours on a Tuesday afternoon, it's definitely not arguing that being productive 24-7 is the goal either. We see at least a little bit of this spirit still alive in Europe, coincidentally the continent upon which Aristotle once walked around in sandals. While Americans are 16% more productive than Europeans, and if anyone in the audience knows how they got that calculation, please let us know, Europeans have way more vacation days, and as a result, are much less stressed, depressed, and burnt out. So maybe part of the problem here is that we're all misunderstanding what laziness actually is? Because while we might think we're being lazy as we binge watch the new season of Selling Sunset while scrolling through Instagram and TikTok at a near psychotic pace, we're actively consuming content on one digital platform while creating data on two other platforms which can then be used to create profit, just not for us. I.e. we're contributing to the proliferation of capitalism, which is almost like work. But if we're sitting around relaxing, taking a walk around the block, or wasting water during a peaceful shower, we might have time to think about ourselves, our lives, others, and the world around us. Surely that's way closer to the type of contemplation the philosophers were talking about than it is to laziness. Unproductive time also helps us manage stress, allows us to recharge, and encourages diffuse thinking, all of which give us more time, energy, and brain power to challenge the status quo. I mean, maybe one of the most radical things we can do to stick it to the man is to zone out on the couch for a while and do absolutely nothing so you have the energy to fight for and think about the things that actually matter. For his part, Price argues that laziness doesn't actually exist, and what we call laziness is usually a warning sign from our bodies and minds that something about our lives isn't working. But we've learned to ignore these signals because they're a threat to our focus at work. So maybe laziness as we commonly think of it isn't real. But what if there's a different kind of laziness we should be paying attention to? According to scholar Kathy Jenny, empathic laziness, or a refusal to empathize with others, like say, people society deems lazy, is a pernicious force in human life today. Maybe it's time to stop worrying about who's doing what and turn our attention to who needs what from us as a society, regardless of how many hours they work today. But what do you guys think? Is laziness as evil as our forefathers said? Or have we been gaslit into not knowing how to chill? Let us know what you think in the comments. Huge thanks to our patrons as always, and if you're interested in getting all of our videos early with no ads along with extra audio and video content, check out the link in the description. But thanks to everyone for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing, and everything else as it really helps us keep the channel going. In the meantime, we give you permission to be as lazy as you possibly can this week, and I'll see you guys soon.